It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the San Jose Convention Center at the first ever Open Power Summit. It's a pretty interesting uh, play here. We're pretty excited about it where you're adding openness to a microprocessor technology that's been around for a very long time. We're really excited to get an IBM guy on to tell us all about it. It's Brad McCready, VP of IBM Power Systems and an IBM fellow, welcome. Ah, thanks, great to be here. Awesome, so uh, great event, first ever event. I understand the foundation's been around for a while, but this is really the first kind of coming out party. Yeah, yeah this is our first year anniversary, essentially. We came out about April of last year, and it's a year later now, and so we're really happy to be here. Awesome, so the, the power microprocessor has been around for a long time, the family. 20 years. 20 years, and now suddenly open. What's, first off, what's open, and then why open? Well, what's open is, is we are opening up all the technology. The same technology that's been in our proprietary systems for a long time is now open technology. Anybody that wants to design microprocessors with this, manufacture them where they want, they can go do that. And the reason why is very important. Right now, you know, it's getting very, very hard to keep moving faster forward. You know, Moore's Law is getting harder and harder to meet, getting 2x every 18 months. And with open innovation, you can get a lot of people working on your technology and move fast and give clients and partners what they need. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because obviously we've seen open in software for a very long time, and now we're seeing more and more of kind of the impacts of, of open in hardware. We were just yeah. at Open Compute Project last week, we'll be at yeah. Open Stack Summit uh, later on in the summer. So, you know, can open really deliver the value like it does in software to hardware? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the same principles apply. I mean, why do we have open software? Well, Linux, we have people all over the world working on Linux kernels, making them better, innovating, bringing new ideas. Those same ideas apply to hardware. And, and don't even think that open power is just hardware. You know, what we're really doing is, is we're really trying to bridge all the way across that hardware-software gap to enable people to innovate with hardware, with software, bring the two together and do things that we haven't thought of before. I mean, that's what we're seeing mostly at the booths over here, places where hardware and software are being optimized together. Right, and it sounds like in the whole I.O. thing too, this continual oh, issue yeah. of compute and the compute and the yeah. data and you got to bring them together. Yeah, I mean, it's, as, you know, as, as silicon gets harder and harder to scale and make go faster, what happens? I.O. becomes more important. Important. Okay, let's take the bottlenecks out of the I.O. subsystem. So we got a lot of people here showing I.O. innovations. Storage, we got the storage guys sitting right there, bringing, bringing bottlenecks out of the storage subsystem. So we got a lot of people working in parallel on a lot of different subsystems of the system. And then, and then ultimately you have the power, right? The actual yeah. power that comes out of the wall as opposed to the power yeah. chip, which becomes an increasingly more important uh, issue as people keep packing in big, building bigger data centers. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you got to, you know, whatever is important, you can optimize on it, right? You need performance, you know, you can go optimize on performance. You need, you need less power, let's go optimize on that. We'll let people change the microprocessor design, change the system design, customize it to their needs, what they need to solve their problems. I'm curious, was, was the impetus really, as you said, because the Moore's Law thing was slowing down and good for Gordon, that the Moore, <laughs> Moore's Law has been <laughs> kicking tail for a long time. Or, or was it that you saw the open in some of the other areas uh, you know, of, of technology and really saw an opportunity to apply that kind of innovation model? You know, it, you know, it's, it's never, you know, certainly when I tell the story, that impetus of, of needing more innovation faster as, you know, the straight, you know, make a faster microprocessor, strength the silicon, that was slowing down, definitely an impetus. What else is an impetus? Well, there's new markets out there that consume technology a different way. You know, we, you, you know you, I know you talked to uh, the gentleman from Google, you know, you got, we have Rackspace here. These internet data centers consume technology a different way. They like to do their own thing. A little bit different than maybe some of our traditional customers where they like to get the vertically integrated system. Right. So, you know, there's, there's different ways technology is consumed. There's a lot of reasons that can get you to the same answer, uh, more than just, you know, the Moore's Law thing. But it, it, it's, it's all gets you to the same answer and leads you to the same conclusion. Open innovation can move things faster. So, and since we're at the beginning of the process, or I guess you're a year into it, are you really seeing some of the really steep um, impacts? coming out of the gate. Ab absolutely, you know, that's, that is what these booths all back here are doing. And each one of them, you know, for their particular application, their particular solution, 10X, 7X, 5X performance improvement. Um, we, we got a lot of those demos going on back there right behind us right now. So we're that's, seeing some results. That's awesome. So next year, what, what's going to be different? What's kind of the priorities for the next 12 months? Next, next year, you know, I think we're going to see, um, 
you know, more and more of deployments. We'll be seeing some of our internet data center people deploy, uh, like Rackspace. Um, I think we're going to see more software participation. You know, we, we, we are hardware guys. We've got a lot of hardware people here. I think we're going to see more software participation, too. Excellent. Well, Brad McCready, uh, godfather of, of uh, <laughs> open power. I don't know, there's been a lot of terms thrown out off camera, but uh, clearly a driving me. force. <laughs> awesome. Thanks well, thanks for stopping by and congratulations. Great seeing you. All right, super. So I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground at the Open Power Summit in San Jose, California. You're watching theCUBE. See you next time.